Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. It took more than a month, but the cops finally got their man. Also tonight, an old local bank is now a new local bank rebranded. And the medical referral program goes under the microscope. In sports, the Chamber of Commerce Scholarship Fund sees a significant boost. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. There you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. We're in a race whether we know it or not. And build our new normal. Enough for Mali to be out. Let's activate the light. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening Commonwealth. Today is Monday, May 24th, 2021. A local man wanted for guns and meth leads police on a high-speed chase, resulting in his arrest. Police have been looking for Don Sanchez Jr. for over a month now, and after a police pursuit, he was finally arrested. The Department of Public Safety received a tip that Sanchez has been hiding in the Garapan area. Police responded and attempted to make an arrest, but Sanchez and another individual got into the car and tried to flee from officers. This then turned into a high-speed chase, passing Gualaray, Chananlaolao, and ending at Koblerville. Police surrounded the vehicle at the intersection near the soccer field, and two individuals, Sanchez and the driver, who is his cousin, were arrested. No major injuries have been reported, but KSPN did learn that two police cars were damaged during the pursuit. Sanchez was arrested back in September 2020 for unlawful discharge of a firearm. He was then charged with receiving stolen property, failure to complete firearms owner identification, removal of a firearm serial number, and possession and trafficking of meth. As of press time, no further details of the case have been released. A grand opening was held this morning to introduce the Bank of Saipan, which is rebranded and relocated. Officials gathered at the Old Hakubutan Boutique 
to witness Bank of Saipan open their doors to their new facility and home in Oliai. John Arroyo, president and CEO, states the bank is bigger and better with some new features that will make banking more convenient. Over the years, banking has definitely grown and Bank of Saipan is bringing some of those advances here, at least by the end of this year. One thing new for the island is our, our 24-hour um, ATM vestibule. Uh, you've probably seen these uh, elsewhere in the States, but but primarily the ATM will be in that area mm -hmm. and after hours um, the doors lock, mm -hmm. but our, 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 our debit card customers can use their card to swipe and unlock the door then come into the vestibule, the door will close and lock behind them, and now they're in a secure place. They can do their, they can do their business. There is also a virtual teller and teller pod. They even rebranded their image, color, and logo. There, there's like three images you can probably see in, in, in the mm -hmm. S, and we could look at the card. And, and most immediately is, is the S. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, 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 it it kind of is a shield, you know, um, kind of around the island and, and provide that financial protection that people look. But it also is a um, homage to the original mission of the bank, which was to provide economic development for the island of Saipan. So the next image that you, you would probably see is the Laddie Stone. You know, and I said the other night that the Laddie Stone is such an iconic symbol of the Marianas. It's one of those things that, you know, kind of pulls us together, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a group of people. The third image the logo represents is something you won't see at first, a fishing hook. And the significance behind that is that, you know, for eons, you know, the, the fishing hook was used as a, a tool, you know, for, for our people uh, for sustenance, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and and for the, the the bank, you know, it it it's kind of uh, you know uh, harkening back to how deep our roots are in our culture, but but also you know like as like a tool, the fishing hook, like a tool. It's a means to an end. The bank, the things that we do, is also a means to an end. The House Committee on Health and Welfare will be holding the last hearing on the medical referral program this week. Health and Welfare Chairwoman Tina Sablon has already listened to the people of Rhoda and Tinian on their view of the Commonwealth's medical referral program and will now be holding the last hearing on Saipan later this week. A lot of the concerns revolved on ways to improve the healthcare system in the Marianas so that patients do not have to travel off-island. The one issue that we heard a lot that is unique to Tinian and Rhoda is that our dialysis patients um, and, and anybody in need of long-term care, so all expectant mothers, all pregnant women on Rhoda and Tinian have to basically relocate to Saipan to give birth to their babies here, right? And, um, and that is a huge burden. Residents said it costs a lot of money to get life-saving services in the Marianas. I think our Saipan residents who have been through the med medical referral program can attest to just like the challenges of trying to navigate your way, your family's way to care off island. It's, I mean, it's, it's a lot, but it's especially challenging if you live on Tinian and Rhoda and you're just trying to get to Saipan or you're just trying to get, or you need to get go out of the Commonwealth. Sablon states her committee has been in dialogue with all partnering agencies who handle medical referral. Like, so we're in, in dialogue with both, with, um, the administration, the medical referral office, which is still under the office of the governor and their staff, as well as with CHCC, which handles inter-island referrals. And then, you know, all of the, so the, the two municipalities, Rhoda and Tinian, they have liaison offices here for their medical referral patients, their inter-island medical referral patients. So, you know, I think it's important to engage with, with everybody that is kind of part of this medical referral universe, right? Um, and, you know, at this point, our, our goal is really to listen. The committee has also heard concerns from patients, caregivers, and health providers from both the public and private sectors. The next hearing will be on Wednesday, May 26, with more witnesses to testify. You know, we want to hear from the governor's office. We want to hear from, uh, you know, medical referral staff, the secretary of finance, the public auditor. Um, I understand is uh, maybe actually in the middle of an audit of the program. So I think that insight would be useful to have as well when it's ready. Um, and, and then we, of course, want to hear from CHCC and, and the members of the community. 
Sablan tells us that the medical referral program has never been established by law, and by conducting all these public hearings, it may help them reach their goal. And we think that having some sort of enabling statute that formally creates this program and also establishes the like just basic standards uh, that should guide this program and um, ideally also depoliticize it and uh, make it run as a more independent and efficient agency. Sablan tells us that the medical referral program has never been established by law, and by conducting all these public hearings, it may help them reach their goal. The next public hearing will be on Wednesday, May 26, in the House Chamber at 3.30 p.m. Coming up, KSPN has more trivia questions that may give you a prize. Stay tuned. by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. A meal replacement smoothie is a great way to keep your fitness goals on track during 2021. And they taste great, it's fast and easy. The May smoothie of the month is pineapple carrot cake. It includes banana, granola, raisins, cinnamon, carrots, and pineapple with 21 and a half grams of protein. It's good for your eyes and good for your waistline. Check out the Shake Cafe, Gold's Gym, Garibay. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking. Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. The Tan Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Do you have the flexibility to work out between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m.? At Gold's Gym, we call this off-peak, and it can save you money. Short-term daytime memberships on sale now, just $59 per month, and gets you access to the biggest and cleanest fitness center on island. Get yourself healthy and strong. Check out Gold's Gym today. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough for my lips to be out. Let us take the mic.
Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Together with congratulatory remarks, several public officials took the opportunity to raise pressing concerns to our youth senators. Public comments opened up and our youth senators immediately began work. As the former president of the Parent Advisory Council, for several years, we tried to add Chamorro class from ninth grade to senior year. I really believe very strongly um, to continue the mother language. And <clears throat> so I challenge you guys to work with our commissioner of education to try and get the Chamorro class back into the high school so that you guys don't lose your culture, the language. But with that said, uh, I wanted to also make a pitch for the Office of Planning and Development. We're right now wrapping up uh, the first draft of the CNMI's first comprehensive sustainable development plan. And over the last year and a half, we've been working with so many different stakeholders. And I'm very excited because I would like to offer uh, our partnership to the Youth Congress. Um, and we certainly uh, want to work closely with you to get your ideas and feedback into the very first plan that we're creating. Uh, worship cases are cases where children are removed from the home, anywhere between uh, babies that are just born that day to children under 18 for various reasons. And so as senators and as representatives for the youth, I challenge you to come up with programs to help our youth. I just want to advocate for one thing, um, Madam Chair. If you guys could please push for mental health in the youth. Uh, the one thing that I start to, um, I'm starting to see rise uh, exponentially is mental health issues in the youth. I really hope that we can work together to see how we can develop programs to bring that back to the schools to see if we could start focusing on those, those issues that, that continue to uh, hurt our kids in their academic achievement. The late Vice Speaker, Sus Mofnes, created the CNMI Youth Congress, wanting to provide a system which allows the youth to prepare to meet the challenges of the future. They have the power to make its own rules, establish committees, hold hearings, and pass resolutions. Floor Leader Yurihana Sasamoto shares what she would like to propose during her time in office. I want to improve the lives of the youth in all four key areas of adolescent development so that our generation is really well-rounded because I know that we have some resources that are strong in some areas like um, education, scholastic curriculum, but also I think like what some of the public commenters said today, we need stronger mental health programs or resources and I really want to try to develop those programs to help all of the youth because we're all different, we all have different needs and that's why I really want to engage with the community and listen to them and give them what they want as best as I can along with my colleagues. These senators can also prepare and pass bills which will go to the governor and the presiding officers at the legislature. Last week you were all over the Tourism Month trivia question. Congratulations to Bryce Camacho who beat you all to the keypad correctingly identifying the sumo wrestler who made a big splash on Saipan as Aki Bono, or Chad Rowan. A new trivia question tonight. Who is this man who visited the Northern Mariana Islands and is famous for what? Email your answer to chris at kspn.com. First correct one to answer is the winner and will get a gift certificate from the Mariana's Visitors Authority. I'll give you a hint, he graduated from the University of Florida. <laughs> All right, coming up in the sports report, golfers, you know, they're coming here to play in the 2022 Pacific Mini Games, but on which course? We'll find out, maybe not. Next.
Houston Entertainment lets you do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. Watch your favorite live and local channels, stream movies and shows on TV, on your phone, and on your tablet, right from your Docomo Pacific Wi-Fi. No more wires, no more cable boxes, now with the best price. Do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. Did you know Cinema's coral reefs and seagrass ecosystems are worth about $115 million a year. Coral reefs alone are valued over $100 million a year. All the more reason these precious ecosystems must continue to be protected. Coral reefs are important to the people of the CNMI because they provide traditional and subsistence uses, production of commercial food products, recreational opportunities for a healthy tourist economy, and physical protection from storms. Do not break or collect coral to take home with you. We need them. Corals are living animals, and it takes decades to create reef structures. Planting trees, grass, and shrubs on bare soil helps prevent sediment from entering our oceans. Trees also help fight climate change. Use a rain barrel and collect water from roofs, yards, and paved surfaces. You can help keep storm water on your property and pollutants out of waterways by building a rain garden. The ocean floor isn't a dance floor. Stepping on corals can break them. Maintain buoyancy when snorkeling or diving. Nutrients from excess fertilizer increases algae growth that blocks sunlight to corals. Coral reefs need clean, clear water to survive. Help keep our beaches litter-free. Always take out your own trash and a little bit more. Anchor in sandy areas away from coral and seagrass or use mooring buoys so the anchor and chain do not drag on nearby corals. Reduce, reuse, rethink, repair, refuse, recycle. Do not feed the fish. Do not take or step on coral. Do not collect shells. Do not fish. Help with local tree planting community events local beach cleanups, and get involved in protecting your watershed. Participate in training or education programs that focus on reef ecology. You can make a difference. Please contact Nina to get involved in community conservation. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans.
When a sports fans maxed out, the Chamber of Commerce golf tournament's getting too popular, I guess, or perhaps it's just golf. All 144 slots were filled Saturday morning for an ideal day on the links. Each year, except last, the Chamber of Commerce holds a scholarship fundraising tournament. Golfers join sponsors in this merchandise-themed one-day event. This car was yours for a hole-in-one on West Course number 12, but alas, it's going back to the dealer. Hole number 11, Paul Kaipat believes the bird is the word. Him and Ben Jones Jr. shot a 66. The format was two-man best ball. Many teammates dressed alike. Ben and Paul, well, almost the same. That's awesome. I like your shirt. I got a shirt just like that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. The lucky pot. For what? Yeah. For the highlight. I didn't have any. That's his highlight. That's a highlight. Oh, you're a team, dude. You guys oh. are a team. Look at you guys. Really you guys. Look at that. You got the same kind of shirt. It's <laughs> a <laughs> sunny delight. Here's a good pairing. 83-year-old John Masumoto, nice oldest right player in the good. field. Yeah, still there, Bob. Teaming up with ball crusher <laughs> Pollock Thompson. He's your distance guy, I, I guess. I told you. Tournament coordinator Shane Villanueva. First off, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors for being out here, um, all the hole-in-one sponsors. Uh, we, we had a full house. Uh, There's 144 golfers that are on today's uh, tournament, and it's it's fun, and it's exciting, and, and we're very happy. We actually have raised the most money that we've ever raised before, so it's uh, we're very happy to be able to give more uh, to the scholars here of Saipan. Um, we've included some high school kids, and also now also including the college level. Here's Tom Tepatep proving that golf can be a frustrating sport. Oh, Tommy. Makeover. Oversight. Mulligan. Cars all up high, my bet to win any Zori's only golf tournament. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. I win. Not all the shots were <coughs> award winners. Lucky it hit the golf cart. <laughs> oh. Bob, Bob got that. Did you get that, Bob? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It wasn't my fault. Everyone wants to be king of the hill, but there can only be one king, except for if they're partners, then they can be co-kings. Joe Kamakazi Kamacha with the drive on number 10. Come back, Jack. Xerxes, his son. It's his turn. Oh, he drives the ball 300 yards on the right side of the fairway. Put by Xerxes, three inches from the hole. So the dad steps in, taps it in. Father, son, Camacho, 63, the winning score. Saipan is hosting the Pacific Mini Games next summer. One of the sports will be golf, but where? The venue for the 2022 Mini Pacific Games Golf Competition will be decided very soon. Committee member Marco Peter gives us the scoop. So right now uh, we have uh, Lala, Lala Bay Res Golf Resort and uh, the Coral Ocean Resort that have, that have uh, submitted the proposal. Actually uh, in the next uh, couple of days we're going to decide as a federation, the Golf Federation, uh, on uh, which, which will best fit the, our team that's going to be uh, preparing for the tournament. So. Uh, in the next couple of days, we we'll definitely know who's gonna who's gonna be hosting. Whichever course is chosen, golfers from throughout the Pacific will most likely be surprised by the quality of the course that they see here. They're gonna be expecting fast greens, pristine fairways. Uh, compared to uh, Samoa, with all due respect to uh, our neighboring islands, uh, we have one of the best uh, courses in the in the Pacific. So, whether it's Lala Bay, Coral Ocean Point, they're gonna be coming and playing the best of the best. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at marianastrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at marianastrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735.
Here is our weather report. Today's high 88, the low 80, humidity 79%. Tomorrow, partly sunny, isolated showers. The winds out of the east 10 to 15. High 89, low 79, seas 3 to 5 feet, sunrise 546, low tide at 1255 in the afternoon, sunset at 641. And the week has begun. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here on Wednesday.